Hi, I'm Rob Wozniak from Preservation Works. My company offers historically appropriate masonry restoration of brick and stone. Mortar has changed a lot in the last hundred years. Today, masons use cementitious mortars to build and repair buildings. But in older buildings, cementitious mortars can cause problems. This video is the first in a series that will visually demonstrate repointing using pure lime mortar. Lime mortar is the mortar that was used almost exclusively for the last 3,000 years of building history, and perhaps longer. Lime helps create a mortar that is compatible with the masonry units it surrounds and ensures that the building will not be damaged by the mortar that was intended to protect it. In performing this function, lime mortar helps keep the building envelope in good working condition for centuries. For additional information on repointing, go to the internet and search for Preservation Brief Number 2 from the U.S. Department of Interior. This document is a layman's primer for better understanding the relationship between mortar and masonry. This is the wall we will be repointing. It is located on the back side of Eastern Yoga, and in the near future a new entrance is going to be built by the neighbor, and we wanted to repoint this wall before that happened. Repointing is a lot more than just filling some holes that have developed in an old wall. In fact, just filling the holes is the wrong way to repoint and will give a poor repair. On average, a masonry building needs to be repointed about once every 100 years. Evidence that a wall needs to be repointed is visible to the eye. If mortar is substantially recessed from the face of the masonry, it needs to be repointed. If the mortar is cracked so that vertical cracks have appeared in the mortar, it needs to be repointed. If the mortar has turned to dust and lost its bond with the masonry, it has done its job but needs to be repointed. Most importantly, if the mortar is causing damage to the masonry, it needs to be replaced. When mortar causes damage to the masonry, it is often called spalling. Spalling is caused by mortar that is too hard for the masonry. Hard mortar keeps the masonry from making micro-movements that occur naturally due to ground movement. Hard mortar is also generally less vapor permeable. Therefore, freeze-thaw cycles mixed with hard mortar can cause spalling. However, even in tropical climates, spalling can be a problem. A saturated soft clay brick can expand in size by as much as 10%. If that brick is surrounded by a hard mortar, the brick will likely give way to the mortar rather than the mortar giving way to the brick. In a properly pointed building, the mortar is the expendable component of the building. Like a tire on a car, it wears slowly but protects the car and its occupants. Not all masonry problems are in all buildings. Some buildings suffer from vertical cracks, usually because the mortar is too hard or cementitious. In other buildings, the mortar has turned to dust. This is actually a good thing. When mortar has turned to dust, it has come to its useful end, but it has also protected the bricks from damage from the mortar. The mortar is essentially softer than the bricks, and therefore, over time, it deteriorates. On our sample wall, we have a number of cavities. Some hard mortar, which has caused damage, as well as some dusting. In our second video, we will show mortar removal in a historically appropriate manner.